Hello friends and welcome back to Stay Tonight. In this video, I'll talk about GitHub Desktop. Yes, if you're a fresher, if you're a beginner who has just started to learn programming and you know you're creating projects, then you must know about GitHub because that's where you keep all the code for your projects. You can create repositories, you can upload your code there, you can share it around with your friends or colleagues or your teammates who are also working with you on the project. So GitHub presents you with a way to manage the complete code that you have, you know, have a proper bookkeeping of all the code changes that you have made along with managing the versions. So if you want to, for example, if you make some changes to your code, but you know, later you realize, okay, you know, those changes were not correct and you want to revert back to the older version of the file. So you can easily do that using GitHub. But generally what I've seen is beginners do face problem in setting up the GitHub account. Generally, GitHub account setting up is easier, but creating a repository and having the same work cloned into their local computer is a bit tricky because now GitHub doesn't support the HTTPS method. So what you have to do is you will have to set up an SSH connection. So for that, you have to create an SSH key, save that key into your GitHub account and then get started with, you know, interacting with the GitHub account and your GitHub repository. But there is an easier way to do that. And that is using the GitHub desktop software that you can see on the screen right now. So what I will be doing in this video is, you know, I'll create a basic GitHub repository. I'll also download and set up the GitHub desktop on my computer. And then I'll show you guys how you can use GitHub Desktop to start interacting with your GitHub repository. So it's very easy using GitHub Desktop. You don't have to worry about writing different commands like git push, git commit, etc. or using command line because I know it is a little difficult for beginners to start doing that. So a better choice would be you should use GitHub Desktop. So let's see how you can use that. So I've opened up this particular URL. As you can see, uh, I have, you know, desktop.github.com open up in the browser. And as you can see, there's a big button for download for Mac OS. So because I'm using a MacBook, if you're using Windows, then you will see, uh, you know, automatically you'll see uh, the file here, which will be available for Windows. So GitHub Desktop is a desktop tool that you can use to interact with your GitHub account. So let's quickly download this. I clicked on the download button. So it shows it is about 123 MB in size. So yes, you know, it might take some time but I am seeing good internet connection right now. So it is almost downloaded. So here I have the GitHub desktop, uh, you know, software installation, the first step. So it's showing me sign in to a GitHub account, which I already have. And I hope you also have. So setting up a GitHub account is super easy. Just like you sign up for Facebook, Twitter, any other website, you can also sign up for GitHub. You have to create your username, password, etc., and you'll be done, right? So uh, if I have to show you, I already have my GitHub account set up here, here and I have a basic repository created over here. So I'll show, I cover two things and I'll also explore and do this for the first time as well. So I haven't also used GitHub desktop as of now. I use source tree, which is another tool created by Bitbucket. Bitbucket is quite similar to GitHub. So they have source tree, but because GitHub is so popular. So I thought, you know, let's explore GitHub desktop as well. And I've seen that, you know, this makes the life of programmers super easy. So what I will do is I'll do two things. First thing is that I will clone an existing repository. So for example, if your friend is working on some code and he or she has committed their code or, you know, saved their code in some GitHub repository. And so they share access with you for that GitHub repository. Now, how do you clone it or how do you copy the code into your local computer? So I'll cover that. Second thing is. I will create a new repository in my GitHub account and then I'll use GitHub desktop to clone it in my local computer and then make changes to it and then commit and push the changes back to GitHub so that the files get uploaded to my repository. So let's quickly see it. So uh, I think I'll go with sign in to GitHub and I think yes. So like I said, I'm already logged in. It says authorize. So I click on authorize desktop. It needs my password. I put in the password. Open GitHub desktop and I think it should start setting up. Yes. So it is automatically showing me my name and my email address. I won't do anything. I will just, you know, click on finish. Move desktop application to the, yeah. Okay. Move and restart. So this is just specific to Mac OS because in Mac, uh, you know, a DMG file is just like you have .exe in Windows. We have .dmg in Mac OS and it's, it has to be moved into the applications folder. So that's what it is saying. I'll just simply click on okay and it will restart the GitHub desktop application for me. So this is my GitHub account. And this is, you know, general, a basic repo that I've created that I want to clone. 
it's taking too much time okay so as you can see in this view there's so many options like create a tutorial repository clone a repository from the internet so this can be used to clone any particular repository right like i just said if someone else shares with you a particular repository so you can use uh you know get a desktop to clone it into your local computer and other options as well so what i will do is i'll quickly create a new repository so i click on new and i give uh any name to my repository like you know testing or let's say uh you know javascript games because uh you know i've been trying to write some cool games in javascript not cool but yeah some beginner friendly games so that i can share it around on maybe youtube and on you know the followers that i have on instagram so they can also if they are learning javascript they can easily learn javascript by creating cool games right so let's write this private and everything else should be same and i just simply create repository so i had to do this i had to create this repository so i thought you know why not do it now so i have a repository now created right and it doesn't have any uh, file in it so it's a blank repository if i just refresh it this is basic quick setup guide that i'm seeing uh, i should not be seeing anything else and it is showing me the commands that i can use to if i am using command line these are the commands that i can use to clone this repository into my local computer but i will not do that i'll just refresh this and see if i can see the new repository that i've created uh yeah so it is fair javascript games clone this javascript games it is saying that uh, so you will ignore this part this is for uh github itself but this is the local path where your uh git repository will be closed so you get you can change this if you want to but i'll just keep this same uh documents github javascript games let's keep it this only or let's just you know bring this on the desktop so if i say desktop javascript game then i think you know this is the path so much so let's just clone it says cloning and yes so now as you can see the changes a section shows nothing in the history again nothing because there is no change available in the repository because i haven't worked on it yet and in the history because there are no commits so in history also you don't see anything so let's quickly you know add some files to this so i have some files in this fsd class i think in js okay i don't have anything maybe in this one i have yeah so i have some number guessing game and rock paper scissor game so let me just you know pick these two control c and i go into this so as you can see there is the javascript games uh, directory that is created and i paste these two files now when i have pasted these two files yes so as you can see so github desktop has automatically picked up those files and it is showing them completely in green because these are new files that are getting added i have this rock paper scissor.js and i have this number guessing js as well right so what do we do we want to push these files now onto the github repository so what i do is i write a summary uh let's say you know first few okay files uh number guessing game and rock paper and scissors game js code all right so once i click this commit to main these files will be committed committing means github desktop will inform the github repository on github website that okay you know some files are locked and i'm sending those files to you so you know be prepared for that so once we commit now you can see that you know a new section comes in over here new tab published to branch and i can also do that from here so those files are now completed as soon as i click on this the files will be published or pushed to my repository so if i click on publish branch it's saying okay you know refreshing and now you are not seeing anything over here in the history section you'll see that okay yes first few game files so this is a commit that i have made and i can see that in history as i make more commits all those will be listed over here let's now you know quickly check our github account if there are files here in this repository yes so as you can see in the javascript games repository i have these two files now right so that's how you use github desktop and it makes sense super easy for you to interact with your github account because like i said setting up that ssh connection using command line to every now and then commit and add files push files take pull 
it becomes difficult and when you get into the trouble of merging because if some other teammate of yours has made a commit and you forget to take a pull and you commit some changes then you get into the trouble of merging those files and with command line it becomes troublesome but with this github desktop tool it will be super easy for you to do that you can also use vs code if you're using vs code you can download an extension for this and use that but i would recommend stick with you know you can use vs code to make code changes vs code you can use as a code editor but once you make those changes you should use this uh you know to make the commits and you know analyze the files what changes have been made you can diff and see what are the difference between the original file and the change that you have made and then you know analyzing after that and after analyzing everything then you can make the commit so i think this is a better way uh, this is a better tool to use so yeah that's how you use it and then there are other options as well like you know new repository if you want to include or if you want to create any new repository you can use this you can also import add clone repository if you want to clone any repository uh, you can provide the path for the repository over here so for example if i have some repository here let's say this test app one and uh, I go to code and it shows me you know cloning. So if I I can just copy this and I can put it in the here and you know I get to clone my repository easily. So that's how you use GitHub Desktop. I hope you know this helps you in understanding how you can use GitHub Desktop and you can easily set up your repository to your local computer and start working, start learning any programming language that you're learning. If you face any doubt, if you face any confusion while following all these steps, if you get stuck anywhere, if you are getting any error, please do post your comments in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends who are struggling with connecting your local computer with their GitHub accounts to work with different code repositories. If you want to see more such videos, subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon, and I'll see you soon with some more exciting content like this.